Hey, welcome. Mike McQuillan here from my Info Product Journeys channel. Today we're going to talk about screen flow and how to use the audio filters inside of screen flow to enhance your video production. Now there are 20 filters in there, uh, Apple, AU filters. Um, you're never going to use all those, okay? And I'm not going to make a three-hour video to <laughs> show you how to do that. So what I've done, I, I picked the five, what I consider the five most useful audio filters. We'll run through those. These are pretty easy to use, and they can greatly enhance the uh, audio output that you capture um, in your edited videos for your YouTube videos. Okay, so let's get started with this. I'll show you five great filters that you may want to use in your next video. Okay, good. Okay, well, let's take a look at how we can use what we call the Remove Background Noise Filter. Okay, so what we're doing here is I'm making a little test recording so we've got something to work with. And in the background, like I said, I have this fan going and I know it's creating an annoying buzz, but I'm going to show you how to remove something like that. Okay? Okay, so right now what we have here is our bad sounding recording right here. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to come up here and click right here on the audio section that we just recorded. Okay, right there. And um, I'll come up, make sure you've selected, the, here are the different choices up here, make sure you've selected the audio icon up here. Hey, it's Mike. Get my free ebook. Learn what all 20 ScreenFlow audio filters do. It's free with insider tips that you won't find anywhere else. So click on the link in the description below this video and you can access it right now. And while, the, <clears throat> excuse me, while this is selected, then all we need to do is come over here to where it says filter, remove background noise. And you'll notice that the, the waveform got a little shallower. It's not quite as, the peaks and valleys aren't quite as tall because it took some of the noise out. Now let's play this again and see how much better it sounds. And in the background, like I said, I have this fan going and I know it's creating an annoying buzz, but I'm gonna show you how to remove something like that, okay? Okay, so when we did this, you can see that it took all of that buzz out of there. One thing I forgot to mention I wanted to is over here, there's a slider bar where you can adjust how much background noise it takes out. And I usually go 80% 80, 80 to 100, something like that. And uh, it works quite well. So that's how you can remove background noise, uh, something from a washer, a dryer, your air conditioner. Uh, dishwasher, noises like that that may be present in the background, you can easily remove that background noise from your recordings using this remove background noise filter. Okay? Good. Okay, right now I'm just talking. I want to get about 10 or 12 seconds here of audio so we can have an audio track and uh, play around with it, tweak it up using different filters. Okay? Okay, so I've got a little test recording that I made here that we just listened to. Um, and that's my normal voice, good or bad, that's, that's what it is. Um, but I'm going to show you how to use this AU bandpass filter. By the way, all these filters that are built into ScreenFlow, they all say AU. That stands for audio units. Okay, so don't let that scare you. <laughs> um, so what I'll do is come down here, and you need to make sure that you're in. The first thing you'll have to do is click on the clip that you want to edit, okay, the audio file right there. And come up and make sure you've got this speaker clicked on so you're in your audio panel. And then come down to audio filters, click the plus sign, and you can use any of these filters that uh, you would like to. We're going to look at this AU bandpass filter first. Okay, so once you do that, you can click on add, and it adds it right here. Uh, the two things you can do, you can change the frequency of your recording. High frequency means a high-pitched voice or music. Uh, low frequency means a low-pitched voice or frequency. So you can play with this, and I'll show you how that works. The other thing is what we call bandwidth, and I'll show you that. So let me click on the Show button right there. And this gives us a graphical um, view of what's going on with the sound that we've got here. So what you can do is you can change this around so that like the blue area is what it's going to focus on on the recording so if you move this way to the right it's going to focus on the very high pitched sounds coming out of your voice um, that can make it sound very tinny it can bring out the clarity of your voice or your music but it can also um, distort the dynamic range and it could make it sound kind of tinny and unwanted um, so I never go that far up 
Um, and I'll also show you that down here, just so you know, the typical male voice has a frequency. This is frequencies are measured in hertz after Heinrich Hertz is a famous physicist. <laughs> but um, the typical male voice has a range somewhere between um, say 90 hertz, something like that, up to maybe 180 hertz. A typical female voice might be from 160 hertz, something like that, up to maybe 260 hertz, something like that. Okay, just so you know. So what we can do here is suppose I want to make my voice sound a little bit lower and richer in the bass sounds and take out some of the higher trebly sounds. Um, we could do it the other way around too. But what I could do is, remember I said typically uh, a male frequency might be, on average, it could be say 140 hertz up here. Um, you know, so I could change that and uh, make this go all the way down to, let's say 70 hertz. Okay, that takes it down um, quite a bit. So it's going to focus on these frequencies in my voice and take out the higher frequencies out here. Okay, and then what the bandwidth does is it shrinks down like this. I would get a, a hummy buzzy sound because it would only focus on this narrow range of frequencies and it would take out so much of the high frequencies that it, it ruins the dy dynamic range of your voice. So in this case, I might take this up to, oh, let me type it in, it's easier, 9000 hertz, okay? So it's taking out a lot of these high frequencies, but I'm still getting a fairly good uh, dynamic range in here, okay? So if I do that now, when I play this, let me take this out of the way here, and let's come back and uh, listen to this and see what it sounds like with that filter applied, okay? Okay, right now I'm just talking. I want to get about 10 or 12 seconds here of audio so we can have an audio track and uh, play around with it, tweak it up using different filters, okay? Okay, right now I'm just talking. I want to get about 10 or 12 seconds here of audio so we can have an audio track and uh, play around with it, tweak it up using different filters, okay? I'm just making a little test uh, recording that we can use and we'll be using what we call a high pass filter. Okay, well here is the uh, test recording I just made and we'll show you how you can use the um, AU high, high pass filter um, to alter that uh, some of the frequencies that are in there. So what we'll do then is just come up here and make sure you've clicked on this audio icon so that it brings up your audio panel right here. You can see right now there are no filters applied. And um, so we'll come over and click the plus sign and find that um, AU high pass filter right there. And we'll add that. Now when you do, you'll notice there are only two things that we can do in here. And uh, that these two things basically uh, are to adjust here, let me click on show so you can see graphically what's going on. You can adjust the cutoff frequency and you can see what that does. And then there's a res resonance uh, uh, slider and I'll show you what you can do with that. So the cutoff frequency, what this does is it takes anything that's in this blue section, any of these frequencies right here in this blue section, it lets pass through. Okay, it lets you pass those through. Um, so if I go all the way down to the bottom, this will be exactly the same as my uh, original recording. It's not going to do much. But if I slide that over, watch what happens as I slide this over and cut out some of these lower frequencies. Look at the waveform down in the bottom, the green waveform in the yellow box. As I move this over, see how the peaks and valleys shallow up? They're not as tall, and that's because the volume that we're, we would generate down here would be much lower because we're cutting out a lot of these lower frequencies. If we go all the way out to the top, you can see that practically nothing is left. I, I wouldn't have really an audio file here. There would just be a few little bleeps. So what you can do with this, though, is come in, you know, we'll just pick something like... Uh, 
uh, let's go over here to maybe like about five this says 521 um, something like that and uh, we can play with this resonance and you can see the resonance like I said what it does is it sort of creates a feedback loop where it takes your original signal and sort of feeds it back into itself and you can see that brought these peaks up if you bring it up too much you'll get a very tinny sounding um, audio and you won't like that okay so let's kind of go with this and we'll listen to both my original recording and what my recording looks like after I have applied this high pass filter okay so let's do that right now I'm just making a little test uh, recording that we can use and we'll be using what we call a high pass filter I'm just making a little test uh, recording that we can use and we'll be using what we call a high pass filter well as you can tell from listening to those two audio clips um, the first one, the first clip that you just saw was my original recording and then the second one had that high pass filter applied and we got a higher frequency range. It took out a lot of the lower frequencies, it let a lot of the higher frequencies go through. Got a little bit of a tinny sound to it, but you can play around with that and uh, it might be something you want to try to use. Okay? So let me just record my voice for about five, six, seven seconds here so we'll have something to work with. Okay, well, here's my little test recording right here that I just made that we just listened to. And what I'll do to, to use this Apple uh, parametric EQ filter, um, what we need to do is first we'll click on our clip. This is my audio clip, okay? And then what we'll do is just make sure we're clicked on the audio panel right up here. And we'll come down to where it says audio filters and we'll click on the one that says Apple parametric EQ and we'll add that. Now this is this is a, a great filter. This is one of my favorite filters if I have to do anything. Um, and what this does, there are only three controls so it's easy to use. And let me click on show so we can get a graphic interpretation of what's going on. Now with the first slider, the frequency, you can center on any frequency in your recording that you'd like. But since I'm doing a talking you know audio thing here um, uh, what I'll do is let me come down to about 140 uh, Hertz remember these are in Hertz this is how they measure frequencies because that's kind of in the middle of my voice range okay I said typically male voices run from you know 80 to 90 up to maybe 180 or so so this is kind of in the middle of my voice range right there and then the Q what the Q does is if I move this down it widens it out and it'll focus on this filter will focus on a band of these frequencies around this center frequency okay so when you use this I like to usually go from maybe two three four five is getting a little big maybe four so it spreads it out just a little bit so I get a little bit of the frequencies around my center frequency that it's going to focus on too now the gain what you can do with the gain if you need to the gain is related to the volume and for example if I move the gain way down like this you can see that my waveform gets not quite as tall and quite as deep um, so I might want to boost this up a little bit um, so I get a good looking waveform here up to uh, oh, you know let's let's try eight okay something like that so now when I play this um, the sound is going to be just a little bit different let's listen and see so let me just record my voice for about five six seven seconds here so we'll have something to work with so let me just record my voice for about five six seven seconds here so we'll have something to work with the difference was subtle but there was a difference there. It was a sort of a deeper, richer, fuller tone after I applied that filter. Anyway, you can play around with that filter. You can do almost anything you want to with it. Um, I would suggest you try it out and see what you can do yourself. Okay, so again, I'll do a little six to eight second uh, recording here so that we'll have something to work with and we can do our next test with. Okay, good. 
What we'll do here is I want to show you I have a test recording down here. This is the one that I just made right here. And we'll use this test recording to uh, show you how to use the Apple AU Graphic EQ, Graphic Equalizer. Um, so what we'll do, what you need to do to begin with is to come up here, make sure you've got the sound icon checked so you've got your sound panel, and then click on the audio file that you want to filter. And then what we'll do is come down here to our audio filter section, click on more or the little plus button right there and then find the uh, uh, let's see Apple AU graphic EQ right there and we'll add that now when you add that you think oh that looks pretty scary there's all these things well it's very simple to use um, basically this equalizer goes from 20 Hertz which is 20 cycles per second that's the lowest end, the lowest deepest sound uh, that the human ear can pick up and recognize all the way up to 20,000 Hertz or cycles per second and that's the highest frequency that the human ear can uh, pick up. So what this allows you to do is to pick a frequency, any frequency or multiple frequencies and bring that frequency up okay so or you can bring it down um, and it lets you adjust the output of your sound by changing these frequencies. Now I typically would probably use this more for music than I would for a uh, spoken voice type thing because uh, there are easier ways, some of the filters I've showed you already are easier to use and adjust like the bass and treble in a, in a voice. But still, if you were recording music, doing some kind of music recording, and you had some kind of instrument that was um, let's say at the high end of the spectrum um, up here uh, maybe you're getting way too much treble sounding you know stuff going on and you could come in and if you could isolate it you could just pick the ones that you were interested in but just to show you let's let's just take some of these and um, I'm gonna cut the frequencies <laughs> the high end of these frequencies way down so this is gonna take out the high pitches um, in my voice and the low pitches the normal pitches uh, will remain the same so this will make it deeper it may make it too deep but we'll try this and uh, see what happens just to show you okay so let's take a listen and see what this did um, making these adjustments okay okay so again I'll do a little six to eight second uh, recording here so that we'll have something to work with and we can do our next test with okay so again I'll do a little six to eight second uh, recording here so that we'll have something to work with and we can do our next test with. Okay well as you can tell um, my first test recording sounded good or as good as I can get um, and after I applied that graphic equalizer um, filter because I took out so many of the high frequencies um, in that recording I got a very muffled very bass low pitch sound which I don't like um, and but I just wanted to show you how that works typically I wouldn't use that graphic EQ um, on voice recordings I would use one of the filters that I showed you earlier um, because it'll be easier and I think you'll get a better effect but with music uh, you may find that uh, using that graphic EQ um, you can you can you know tone down some of the some of the tones some of the sounds you're getting from different instruments you know maybe you've got drums maybe you've got bass guitar rhythm guitar lead guitar and a singer and uh, you're trying to bring out the best tones of each one it may be more useful there but I just wanted to show you how that worked 